It's your boy Mark Gray chilling at the Verizon Center, the house that Gilbert Arenas now owns. And that's big because the Washington Wizards, for the third time in as many years, are going to face LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the most compelling matchup in the NBA's Eastern Conference first round. But even before we get to the first round, there's big news going on all over the league as this is the most exciting time of the year. So let's take a look at the NBA playoffs. And my cast and crew have been dispatched all over the country to give me the inside scoop. So we're going to fire up the groove line, 800-450-7876. And let's check in with David Aldridge of TNT Sports, your home for the NBA's Western Conference Finals. But we got a lot of ball to get to even before we get to the Western Conference Finals. So, D.A., let me put it to you like this. With all eight teams in the West having won 50 games at least, is there anything such as an upset if anybody gets knocked off in these playoffs this year? No, no. And, and that, that's an excellent point, Mark. And I, I hope that, that people understand that, that there's not, and there are no upsets in the Western Conference. If Atlanta beats Boston, that's an upset. <laughs> okay? If Philly beats Detroit, that's an upset. But if Dallas beats New Orleans, that's not an upset, okay? It's not an upset. You, you know, I suppose if Denver beats the Lakers, that will be an upset. Um, but other than that, you know, you've got Dallas, New Orleans, you've got San Antonio uh, against uh, um, Phoenix, and you got Utah, Houston. I mean, those are all very evenly matched teams. So there's no upset there. And certainly, um, there's not going to be an upset if Utah plays the Lakers in the second round and beats the Lakers. I mean, there's just no, there's no such thing as that this year with these teams. I mean, they're just so evenly matched. One through seven, let's say. I won't include Denver in that group. But one through seven, they're, they're about as even as you can get. So, um, there, there is no, there's no, uh, there will be no surprise in any result in the Western Conference. DA getting it done. Don't forget, you can catch DA. All playoffs long on TNT's coverage of the Western Conference. The finals begin, well, sometime after the semifinals end. To Mike Kahn from FoxSports.com, author of the Kahn Games blog. And, Mike, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Let's get right down to it because... One of the big moves that was made at the trading deadline was Shaquille O'Neal being traded from the Miami Heat to the Phoenix Suns. With the Suns so close to the Western Conference Finals last year, do you think that he gets them over the hump? Is that enough to get past San Antonio this year and on to the NBA Finals? They have more diversity you know, this, you know, than the Spurs do. They can play different ways, and they can run better than the Spurs can run. And just having O'Neal in the middle of the lane changes things for, for Tim Duncan. And not only does it change things for Tim Duncan, it, it opens a huge hallway for Amari Stoudemire. Since they made that deal, Stoudemire has had unbelievable numbers. It takes pressure off him. He can pretty much do whatever he wants against other power forwards in the league. So uh, I don't know that the Suns have the goods to win the title, but I, but I do believe they have... Uh, what it takes to beat the Spurs if, and that's a big if, 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 uh, if Shaquille can last through a, through a seven game series. It's hard to know how healthy he is and, and if he is fine right now, what does it say about him that he basically just quit on the Heat? Mike Kahn, getting it done. Don't forget, you can catch Mike Kahn with his Kahn Games blog at foxsports.com. Now to Scoop Jackson, columnist from ESPN.com's Page 2, who's seen a month of Sundays of NBA playoff action. And Scoop, the most compelling matchup in these playoffs, clearly in the first round, has to be the Washington Wizards, the number five seed, against the number four seed, Cleveland Cavaliers. The last two years, the Wizards have lost to the Cavaliers, but Gilbert Arenas is real confident. Did the Wizards superstar screw up by calling out the Cavaliers on his NBA.com blog, especially since this is a team that they haven't been able to get past the last two times they've met in postseason? 
you know, they weren't healthy last year. They 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 were two they were missing two clips last year going into that system. So what I'm saying is that Gilbert's back, running his mouth, he really doesn't have anything to lose. There's only one other play. I mean, I, LeBron hasn't reached that stage where you can jump off, you know, and, and, and say something that's going to irritate him to the level that he's going to drop 50 on you every night. You know, Mike was that dude. Kobe may be that only dude in existence. So LeBron, I don't think cats fear him like that. And Gilbert's nice himself. I can see Gilbert doing everything he can to back that up, especially, especially if for the first time in two years, they three amigos are in the lineup at the same time for an entire series. That's Scoop Jackson, ESPN.com's page two. Remember, you can catch him every Monday night on the Sports Groove, News Talk 1450 WOL, and on the World Wide Web at WOLAM.com. Branson Wright, NBA writer from the Cleveland Plain Dealer newspaper. You've seen every game that LeBron James and the Cavaliers have played this season. So do you get the sense that this cyberspace challenge from Gilbert Arenas is going to motivate him to take his game to another level? And will that mean even more trouble for the Wizards in these playoffs? One of my criticisms of LeBron is that I, I, I often think he's too nice and, and he's the kind of guy that really doesn't play really hard unless he's motivated unless he's angry well right now without question he's motivated because of these comments and i think there's a little anger in there too he, he's definitely looking forward uh, to, to this uh series and again the first time they played two years ago he was only the third guy to get a triple double in his first postseason game so i don't know what he has in store for for game one in this series but I, I'm looking forward to it, and, and I know it's going to be a heck of a series, and I know a motivated LeBron is going to have a heck of a start. Branson Wright, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Thanks for getting it done. All right. Last and certainly not least, Michael Lee, the NBA writer from the Washington Post. You've seen the entire league, and you know this Eastern Conference as well as anybody. So... Your thoughts on the Wolf tickets that have been sold by several Wizards players. Do you think that bodes well for them going into the playoffs, or does this mean big trouble? Oh, not at all, um, because Cleveland's just not as good. And I think the reason why they're talking so much trash right now is because they see a vulnerable team, a team that they can beat. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why there's been so much popping off from Deshaun Stevens and after Gilbert Arenas. I think that when Gilbert starts talking trash, it leads to, to, tr to trouble because... So far, he hasn't really been come through on too many of his predictions because, uh, you know, I'm sure you remember he said he'd get 50 on um, Portland. He didn't do that. Uh, you know, he talked trash about winning the season opener in uh, Boston and wasn't able to do that. You know, but I think in this instance, the Wizards just, just feel confidence. And I think the thing that Gilbert gives the Wizards, he gives them that swagger. He gives them that confidence that going into every game that they feel like they can win. And I think we got so much stuff going on right now with Gilbert talking, with Deshaun calling LeBron overrated, you know, this this should be a real compelling series. When you look at the Eastern Conference, there's no other series that's, that's going to generate much interest in this one. Michael Lee of the Washington Post, thank you so much for the knowledge. Don't forget, you can catch Mike's fine work at WashingtonPost.com. want to thank the entire crew for joining me for this playoff preview. And as for my predictions, well, I predict the unexpected. I wouldn't be shocked if neither number one seed, either the Lakers or the Celtics, don't get to the finals. Of course, it wouldn't shock me either if we rekindle the memories of my high school years with a Lakers-Celtics final. Only thing missing, Magic and Larry Bird. Thanks to David Aldridge, the DA of the NBA from Turner Sports. Don't forget you can catch DA's work on TNT Sports exclusive coverage of the Western Conference Finals a little bit later on in these playoffs. Also want to thank FoxSports.com's Mike Kahn, author of the Kahn Games blog on a computer terminal near you. Thanks also to Scoop Jack. You can catch Scoop from ESPN.com's page two Monday nights on the Sports Groove radio program at News Talk 1450 WOL and on the World Wide Web at WOLAM.com. Also want to thank Branson Wright from the Cleveland Plain Dealer newspaper and thanks as well to Michael Lee, the NBA writer from the Washington Post. Till later on in the playoffs when we break it down for you once again, it's your boy Mark Gray. Holla back.